Welcome back to the AHG Way podcast. We are right in the middle of a five episode series on buying homes. That's right. Buying. So we've decided to get real narrow in our focus for just a little while and talk about talk about buying houses. And then I'm sure we'll do a series on selling houses. And then we might shift over and do a series on setting goals in your business. I mean, we, you know, we can yeah. listen to ourselves talk all day all long. <laughs> or getting a HELOC to buy investment properties. Oh yeah, we have earmarked that as yeah, a future we did. topic. We did. I think yep. that's a good one. Yeah, it is. That's a great one. So the last episode we talked about lender. Yep. So yeah, we talked about why it's so important to pick the right lender when you're buying a house. Um, and I think we covered some some important points. Obviously, closing on time, customer service, doing what you say you're going to do, and being responsive are the critical mm -hmm. keys to to the right lenders. And there are there are quite a few in this area that deliver on all of those things. Which is yeah. we are Mike made a point. We're really blessed in this area to have top notch lenders. So we can always put any of our listeners in touch to, to any of the, with any of those lenders. So yeah. now let's back up just a little bit though, and let's talk about what happens generally before that, or what should happen before that, which is finding the right agent. So how would you, and I don't know if we should approach this as if we're in the business or not in the business. It's really hard to peel ourselves out. Well, I know what happens So Chris, I go to the computer, I'm looking at realtor.com. Yep. And, or Zillow. And, yeah. Yeah, we'll use Realtor.com okay. because I'll right. soon use those guys or Homes.com. I'm somewhere Trulia, there. Yeah. And I see a house <laughs> that I think is really like the most interesting thing. And I click on a button. Find says, out more about this says, house. Con that find out more about this house or contact an agent. And next thing you know, you do that and you get calls from six different agents, maybe. And your phone starts ringing off the hook. Yep. What just happened, Chris? Well, you're put into the ad pool for whatever website you're on. So agents in the area pay for leads. What do you mean they pay for leads? They're paying those websites, whatever website it is, to actually have them feed them leads when somebody clicks on a property. So it's not necessarily even the agent that's listed the property. So that property could be on the market and be listed by you, but that doesn't matter to yeah. those websites. They'll whoever well, clicks on it. Well, in fact, they actually play on that. A lot of times they'll do everything they can just shy of being dishonest, of making you think that you're actually reaching out to the listing <laughs> agent. That's right. Because a lot of people want to do that. They want to reach out to the listing agent because they feel like that's the shortest path oh, to get information that, on huh? that. And so yeah. the website makes it seem like you're doing that right. and really you're just going into a pool and having a bunch of buyer's agents contact you. That's to, right. And so. to help with the point that Chris is making and doing a great job of making, the major portals, the, the Realtor.coms, the Zillows, the Homes.com, I mean, the large portals, um, they last year sold to Realtors. Realtors paid for 251 million leads last year. 251 million. There were 251 clicks on that contact an agent. Yet both sides, when we talk about buy side and sell side, there was right at 12 million sides in 2020. So actually 12 million buyers and sellers transacted in 2021, but there were 251 million leads sold from the major portals. We don't know about all the other right. stuff, our website. That's yep. not including our website and all the agent websites out there. So yeah. what I'm, my point is that's a pretty random selection of an agent, isn't it? It is, it is, and, and it's, you know, what? how many agents Mike have entered this MLS in just the last three years. So, oh yeah. I mean, how many? A couple hundred at least. It's, it's actually about 250 to just in this MLS. Well, our board, but our, yeah, our Snake River MLS in the past three years, about 400. So that's a total of, let's, let's talk total number of in the Snake River MLS. How many realtors are there? Um, it's been a little bit since I've up, really check the number, but it's around 1,300. Now that's from Pocatello to Island Park. Right. right? So that's pretty broad geographic area. So the, long... so the idea here is you click on Zillow and you could get, let's just say half of them are paying for leads. You could get one of 800 different mm -hmm. real estate agents. Oh, yeah. So how long does it take to get a real estate license? Are you going to night classes or day classes? You're going, you're all in. You're going to day classes, eight hours a day. Yeah, isn't it 80 hours? Is that what two it weeks. is? Yeah. yeah. Two, two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. And a test. From eight to five. Yeah. How much money? A um, couple grand-ish? Yeah, ish. Books, class, yeah. license, maybe, all that. Maybe a Not thousand. Not even that. Yeah. 
Okay. Talk so, fish. yeah. So one of the things that we um, that's important to know about our industry, which is not something that we're terribly proud of, is the really low barrier to entry to get that's into right. what we're doing. So we're allowed to after after sitting in class for two weeks, we're allowed to now handle a transaction that represents the most significant piece of most people's net worth, the biggest transaction that they'll do that year, maybe that decade. Not only that, then there's the emotional aspect of it. There's uprooting the family, relocating them. And, and that's always been really interesting to me. My sister who cuts hair, you know, she, she jokes about how it takes her, took her 2000 hours of cutting hair to get licensed to do that <laughs> legally to do, and hair. I, to do hair for $34. And I'm not discounting that industry. That's a really critical industry. Yeah. Well, and she's very talented at that. Um, what, so I'm not suggesting it should be any less in that industry. What I'm suggesting is that maybe at some point, someone ought to look at making it a little harder to get a real estate license. That's right. But what that yeah. means is that it's, it's all the, you know, it just suggests how critical it is to make sure you take the time and find the right agent. So what are some ways to do that then for, for our listeners? Um, we, you know, we know if they're in this area, it's just call Anderson Hicks. There's no other way That's to right. approach it. But if they're not in our area, how do they go about finding the right agent? I would say if you aren't in the area and you've been in an area and worked with an agent that you loved, I would, I would facilitate that um, conversation okay. through them. Cool. So, you know, if, so you, if you've had an agent, agent referral from that's an agent right. you trust. Yeah, because awesome. generally those agents know they can easily find in this area who the top performing agents are. And if are. they can't, then what does that say about, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. I was in a so, conversation Monday, a past client called, they're moving, they're relocating to Richland. And as a part of that conversation, before I could ask her, she said, Mike, do you, do you have someone that can help me like you help me right. up in Richland? Like so you she, help me. That's the key. Yeah. So yep. she's, she, well, she's, she, she gets it. She doesn't she want to get it. online and take her chances. That's right. And just roll she, the dice. She's saying, find me an agent. Yeah. Um, you know me. You know my personality type. She's saying, match me up with somebody who will, yeah. who will understand me before I get there. Yep. And good agents will be networked with good agents in that area, or yes. they'll know the tools to find someone that That's is right. good. And so, yeah. okay. So number one would be, Find an agent you trust in your area, have them refer you to an agent in that area. What's yeah. num what would be number two? If you don't, I mean, if you don't know anybody, so you've not bought a home before, um, Google reviews works for sure yep. as an option. And I would use that not as the sole um, decision-making part. It should weigh heavily. You can, you can you can really believe those reviews. Google is pretty, pretty firm about how they verify valid reviews. But there's also people that you know that have purchased and have some experience. And so mm -hmm. that's a great basis to also yeah. get information for about an agent. So people you work with. And, it, and I would tell you that go, when you're gonna ask for that referral, go to somebody who you think has pretty high standards that, that you, in fact, you consider them to be kind of fussy, kind of picky. Because if that person says, my agent did a great job, yeah. that's, that's, a great, that's a great recommendation, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Good. Okay, so number two, well, you threw out two there. So number one would be agent referral. Number two would be reviews, consumer reviews on multiple platforms. There's social media reviews. There are... There are reviews on some of these platforms that you guys talked about right. and Google reviews. That's critical. And then number three would be the just talk to people that you trust and know that have high standards uh, with professionals right. and get recommendations from them. And you can you can cross you can blend those methods too. You can get a couple references from people that you've that you know personally, and then you can go check them out on Google or somewhere and, and see some yeah. reviews. And then and then quite honestly, I mean, in, on the listing side, it's really common for us to get interviewed in that process. Like they view that as a hiring yeah. process. On the buyer side, it's not as common. On the buyer side, it's like, hey, just get me in the house. And if I like the house, then we'll work together. If I like you, I might let you show me a second house. But, you know, but is there a process where a consumer may, be benef may benefit from actually interviewing multiple agents on the buyer side? 
Absolutely. Before they ever look at a house. Absolutely. Okay, so what should they be? What kind of questions well, should they I, ask, know, and what should they look for? The, what what I would say, and and this is one of the things that we teach our agents. It's it's in order for me to represent a buyer in the best way that I can, I need to have a certain understanding of where they're at. Mm -hmm. And so that's not only an interview of the agent from them, but it's also an opportunity for the agent to ask them questions about what are your goals? Where do you wanna be? How long do you wanna be there? Mm -hmm. You know, Have you talked to a lender? Get them lined out. And that's really what we, we call it a success plan. Putting a success plan together for that person because um, you know, right now we're noticing a ton of buyer fatigue. And so those yeah. people that are going through what you just talked about and what you hit on, Mike, where they're calling and just trying to get into the house, um, there, there are multiple buyers in the market right now that have submitted three, four, five, six offers, and they're not yeah. winning. Mm -hmm. And the reason they're not winning is because the, it, the agent that they're getting paired up with through that process isn't taking the time to understand that and create a success plan yeah. so that they can be competitive. And you know, I, I think that, if you you hit it on the head, most sellers, the first call they make is to an agent. They want an agent to come and talk to them about their house. But most buyers, they miss that process. And so I would just wow. encourage you, get with the, the agent before you even start looking at houses mm -hmm. so you can understand the dynamic. If, if a lender tells you you're approved up to $300,000, well, what do we know about that mm -hmm. price range right now? It's sure. super competitive, yep. right? Well, if, and so, well, yeah. we've got an agent in our office right now that uh, began working with a buyer who'd been working with another agent. That agent had, they'd submitted three offers and they hadn't won. So they, by referral, end up with one of our agents and the first offer they make, they, they get the house. Right. So when you talk about success plan, it's a success strategy. And so today I'm on the phone with a, a buyer who's about to make an offer and they've got a home that they've got to get sold in order to buy. And so her question to me is, Mike, how do we structure an offer to be attractive to the owner that they would want to work with us? What does that look like? Yeah. And so I would just tell you that, that experience is what helps that. Now, in our case, the great thing about like our agents on our team, we do have agents that haven't been in business for a long time, but they're gaining years of experience in a very short period of time, plus they have us. Mm -hmm. And so if they don't have the answer, they've got someone direct that they can yeah. go to to get those answers. But it, it, it's such a vital thing, and I think you're exactly right, Sean. It's, it's for whatever reason, when people are about to spend a bunch of money, big money for the biggest purchase that they've ever made, how little they edit. I remember when I was interviewing, back before I got into real estate, this long time ago, I was coming out of the Army, and um, so I was an officer leaving the Army, and I went to San Francisco where they set up interviews, and I had 10 interviews in a period of three days with different companies, big companies, you know, the Procter and & Gamble's and Boeing and these big companies. Yep. And as in interviewing, what a difference I could tell about the companies or the people I would be employed by just by the interviewing process. Yeah, so when you interview your agent, you'll get a real feel for who they are, what their business looks like, and how they would take care of you. Yeah. You'll, see, you'll see the difference. Just try it, see what happens. Okay, rapid fire answers here. We gotta wrap this up. If I've already looked at houses with a couple buyers, Chris, what are my obligations? I'm sorry, with a couple agents. Uh, back it up. I said, look right. at, did I say look yeah. at buyers with, you did. with yeah. a couple houses? No, you said okay. looked at houses with a couple okay. buyers. If we've already looked at a couple buyers with some <laughs> houses. If we've already been out and walked through some doors with an agent before, what? but I'm not thrilled with how that's going. How do I handle that in a professional and ethical way to where I don't put any agents in a bad situation? Well, you need to clearly communicate that to whatever agent you've been working with. Agreed. Number so, one, give them a chance to that's right. fix what's going on. And that's part of the representation agreement. So clearly communicate your dissatisfaction. And most agents at that point will either increase their efforts or figure out how to fix it, yep. or they'll allow you to you know, yeah. do whatever you need to. On the and there's two end, scenarios so. there. One scenario might be I've signed something with that agent binding me to them. Another one where I haven't. Either way. Either way, we, we feel that you owe that to that person. Anytime you're not happy, give them a fair chance. That's it's hard, right. You know, because yeah. people, people do. I mean, sometimes all it takes is a, is a frank conversation and, you, and they'll do 180 and you'll be thrilled from then on. That's right. And that's great. 
um, if they haven't signed anything and they don't make make things better, then is there any any obligation to stick with them? Not if they haven't signed anything. Okay, if they have, but they're not fixing the issue, what are their options, Mike? Well, if they've signed a representation agreement yep. as a buyer, if you've signed a representation agreement and you've made the decision not to work with that agent, you need to terminate that agreement. It's like any contract. Yep. You, you've got to terminate a contract before you can sign another contract. Yeah. And so that's really what you have to do. And whether you, all, none of us like conflict. I mean, who, who thrives on conflict, really? So whether you have the conversation or whether you send an email or something terminating that, you yeah. have to very clearly terminate it. I always recommend you do it in writing. That, that hey, here's a termination, no hard feelings, best wishes to you. We just, we just need to do something else. And, and then you're able to move forward. A seller representation agreement is a little different because in that case, for sure, you've got a, an agent who's spent money on your behalf up front to help you market your property. A yeah. whole different thing, and, and we'll talk about that at another time. But yeah. On the and, buyer and honestly, side, if, it's, it's if they're not wanting to let either scenario, if they don't want to let you out of that agreement, now you have a contract and it's, it could be, there are brokers, you can escalate yeah. up to the broker. Um, there's, there's court, we wouldn't suggest yeah. that. But if, and we're not encouraging that by any means. No. Most of the time, the agents that we have in this area are, are mostly really high caliber agents. So, so well when you have that honest conversation, most of the time you're gonna get a really positive response. If not, maybe the broker can help you put them with somebody else that's still inside that brokerage. There's a lot of, lot of mechanisms. Um, but really, the only, the only way that we believe that that's a right path is if it's a performance-based issue that doesn't get repaired. You know, sometimes yeah. people, buyers, you know, they'll, they'll go a different path because of convenience or because the agent's out of town or, or maybe to save a few bucks because yeah. they get a kickback in those. We obviously, we, we wouldn't condone, we well, wouldn't the, encourage this that is at why, all. This is why you, this is why you interview an agent. And, and honestly, folks, a really simple way is just ask your agent, just let them know you want to do a buyer consult. And you'll be able to tell an awful lot about that agent's practice by the, the nature and quality of that buyer consult. Yep, and right. so we, we don't need to define what that buyer consult is. Just remember that buyer consult, ask your agent to conduct a buyer consult with you, yep. whether it's in person or by Zoom, make sure you can see their face, have interaction and, and do that. You'll, you'll get a great feel for their practices there. Absolutely. Okay, awesome, good episode, appreciate the insight. That's two, we've got three more to go. Next time we're gonna be talking about the actual finding process. How do you find the right house? Uh, what does that look like? And then we're going to get into negotiating. We've got some fun things to cover. So yeah. appreciate you guys yeah. hanging in there with us again. Share this like crazy. Like it. Just comment. And uh, we appreciate your support.